today I'm going to share with you two incredible ways to change the backdrop color for two different situations. Situation 1. You have a white or a light gray background. All you need to do is to click on the adjustment layer icon and choose solid color. Pick any color you want. I'm going to go with this bright blue. Hit OK. First, change the blend mode to multiply. This is for the dark areas. But it's also darkening up the highlights. So for the highlights, we want to make a copy of this by pressing Ctrl or Command J and change its blend mode to screen. Keep in mind, multiply darkens, screen brightens. But we only wanted it in the bright areas. For it, double click on the right hand side of the layer and take it away from the dark areas of the layers that lie under it or in other words, the underlying layer by taking the left slider to the right, like so. But this is very harsh, so hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the slider to break it apart and take it apart according to your taste. So I'm gonna go this much, this looks nice, hit OK. Now you might ask, what about the subject? It's covering the whole thing. Hold the Ctrl or Command and select the second layer as well. Both of them are now selected. Press Ctrl or Command G to group it. For now, for convenience, let's turn it off and come back to the original subject layer. Now make a selection of the subject using your favorite method. In this case, I'm just gonna use the quick selection tool. You can pick any one of these tools and at the top, select subject is gonna show up. For more accurate selection, you can try this. Click on this drop down and choose cloud. This is available in the later versions of Photoshop. It does a little more accurate selection by sending it to the cloud. Click on select subject. Here we have that selection and then turn on the group and with this selection active with the group layer selected, hold the Alt key or the Option key and then click on the mask button to create a negative mask. And there you go, it's done. And now you can finesse the mask using the brush tool. Select the brush tool and with white as the foreground color, you can paint the hair areas, get it back like so. And similarly, you can take care of other areas as well. For example, this area is left out. Just be careful with the mask and you can take your time with it. Now, sometimes there might be edges that look very striking. For example, this edge for it, make the brush a little larger. You want to make sure you have a soft round brush selected and then just paint with white and let it spill a little bit on the edge. That way it will dim it down and you can take your time to do it, but it's done. Coming to the second situation, let's say you have a solid color background and in the background, the color is such that matches with the skin. What do we do now? First of all, make a selection of the subject again. Again, I'm going to choose the quick selection tool and click on the drop down, choose cloud and select subject. With the selection active, we are simply going to create a hue saturation adjustment layer. Click on the adjustment layer icon and choose hue saturation. But we only want it to affect the background. But right here, the mask is opposite. So with the mask layer selected, press Ctrl or Command I to invert it. Now you can play with the hue and set it to whatever you want, but there's a problem. If you play with the lightness, See, right now it's absolute white and right now it's absolute a blob of black. We don't want that. So instead of directly playing with these sliders, use the hand right here, activate it and then click on one of these yellow areas or whatever color the background is. And then expand the range here. This is the range of color that is selected or targeted. Right now, as you can see, the yellow areas are targeted. Expand it a little bit much because the subject is masked out anyway. Now change the hue to whatever you wish. And here's the advantage. You can make it black or white by playing with the lightness. How cool is that? For this example, let's set it to a purple-ish color. This is fantastic. And you can increase the saturation and decrease the lightness to slightly make it darker. Now you can take your time to play with the mask. As you can see, the mask may not be absolute perfect. So you can select the mask, take the brush. With white or black, you can work on the mask like so. There we go. And you can take the time to do the rest of the areas. Usually when you have a color backdrop, sometimes you have a little bit of spill on the subject. Here as well, you can clearly see that there's a yellow spill around the arm. So simply take the brush with white as the foreground color, just paint around with a soft brush so that the purple can go in instead of the yellow. Now, if you're the photographer and you know that you're gonna change the backdrop color to something else later, or you wanna experiment with something, I recommend that you capture the subject with a gray backdrop. That just makes it so much easier. With a colored backdrop, you're gonna have a little bit of spill, which makes it a bit challenging. Another thing you may have noticed that when you push the adjustments way too much, our images start to break. For example, in this case, if we open up the properties by double clicking here, by the way, where are the changes we made? It's still inside of the yellows. Make sure to select that. Let's say we decreased the lightness all the way to the left hand side. This looks cool from this distance, but as soon as you zoom in, there is some banding. 
images are starting to break this is not looking right and for that i recommend watching these videos next where we focus on backdrops and banding i hope this helps thanks so much for watching make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss any other future tips tricks or tutorials see you in the next one till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating Oh,